Hey folks, Joseph Rampola here from AWE TV, and I'm here with the one and only, the one and only Track Lord from Matayo. And Track, tell us what's going on lately with Matayo. Cool, yeah. Matayo's been up to uh, all sorts of interesting things since we last spoke. One of the things that we didn't really get to show at AWE New York, we brought here. Uh, we've been showing this since the Mobile World Congress in Spain. What this is, is a dynamic, real-time facial reconstruction demo. So we're using this Connect, which everyone I'm sure is familiar with. What it's going to do is it's going to basically recreate an entire texture of my face in order so we can add digital and virtual content on top of it in a way that behaves naturally, as opposed to kind of the 2D mobile way. So this, of course, is not a mobile demo. This is a pure demo. But see. So first off, I'm going to uh, look right here in the Connect. I'm going to go ahead and initialize the demo. It should isolate my face, which it has. So I'm, gonna, I'm not going to talk to this next part. What I'm going to do is just move my uh, head slowly to the left and right as soon as we start the tracking. And you'll see it start to populate here. And as you can kind of see, this is a full 3D model. you see it's mapping more and more. Of course, I'm talking. I'm not supposed to be talking. That should be good enough. Now I have the uh, content that I can place. And we basically, in this, do in this demo, we made sure that you know, we can not only do this, but basically switch out different types of content, sort of like it would be kind of like a consumer shopping demo, but it's really just to show how cool the technology is, that's all. I like Ray-Bans, I'm sure you knew that <laughs> about me, it's actually look a lot like it. And of course, so I'm going to show you real quick, of course, if I, had, if I had kept it going and if I had basically an ear here, then it would have essentially occluded uh, the actual demo, so it would have blocked that part of it, because I don't, um, there we go. Because I don't, it's going to uh, it's going to appear a little bit strange when we go into the actual real area. But you notice here, we're basically we're manipulating content on a full 3D model. We create an entire 3D model. Test the tracking. Tracking looks good, and bam. So like I said about the ear part, but if you look, it occludes it. Oop, I lost them for a second. There we go. There we go. And if I if I move them around, my nose will actually if you see. It's behind my nose. It's, like re it's reading glasses now. Yeah, exactly. Basically, we're actually occluding it, so I can actually even bring them further behind my face or further out. See? It's that full 3D map that we just created. And so we see this. Recently, we've been starting working with a lot of uh, 3D cameras. Oh, no. Because, uh, for the most part, uh, we see 3D cameras as kind of the next step in uh, camera technology. Uh, so... I don't know if you're familiar with our work with Intel, but we've announced that we're going to be integrating our 3D augmented reality capabilities into Intel's RealSense SDK and platform. And that's going to allow us to, once they have embedded 3D cameras with basically this thing, but about this big, and inside uh, a tablet device, we'll actually be able to do these experiences on the fly. Real-time 3D facial uh, reconstruction, real-time di uh, dynamic environment occlusion. So basically you take a piece of furniture and you put it in a house, but you want it to be behind the things that it's going to be behind, right? You can't do that right now with mono vision, really. So that's the kind of things that we're, kind of, we're trying to do, you know, bring that uh, augmented reality to that next dimension. So let me ask you, you were at the, uh, one of the judges for uh, yesterday's hackathon. Yeah. How was that experience? It was really cool. Uh, a lot of really bright people out there. Um, uh, we, saw, we saw a couple of really cool demos. Actually, the, the two that I really enjoyed used the Oculus, but they used it really, really well. Uh, it was basically a very straightforward entertainment game. One was like a version of Asteroids that you played with your hands. Another one was a, was a bowling variant where you, you, you basically bowl with thumbs up, thumbs down. Um, but it was funny to hear uh, so many of the contestants saying things like, you know, we really want to bring manuals directly to the, the vision of the person. I want to take furniture. I want to place it virtually. I mean, these are that last part, the virtual furniture part, was in Matteo's original business plan, you know, that they were going to basically help people put furniture and visualize furniture. And it's funny um, to see that kind of uh, sentiment growing now in the industry after uh, we basically helped make it happen. And now it makes sense to everybody now. It used to be, I, I don't understand, why would I ever want to visualize furniture? And now you've got these people independently coming to that realization and developing experiences around it. So it was, it was pretty cool. It was very cool. Awesome. Well, listen, you know, best of luck with Matayo. You guys are doing some awesome stuff. I know you always have the inside uh, AR conference, and yeah. uh, it really is big out there in, uh, in Germany. But uh, best of luck to you, and thanks for showing your demo. You're very welcome, Jim. Always a pleasure. Appreciate thanks it. Thanks a lot.